Nothing But The Words, episode number 54, Pros and Cons of Collaborative Books. Welcome to Nothing But The Words, the podcast that gives you everything you need to know to write a phenomenal book. Now here's your host, your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Hey there, and welcome to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Today, I want to talk about the idea of collaborative books and whether or not they really offer a good opportunity for authors. There's an entirely different discussion to be had about the value of collaborative books from the perspective of the editor, the person who pulls the whole thing together and publishes it. And we can address that on a different episode. But for now, I want to address the pros and cons of collaborative books for people who want to become authors or maybe already are authors, but are still considering participating in someone else's collaborative book. If you're not familiar with the term collaborative book, it's really sort of the self-publishing version of an anthology. So if you think back to maybe the Norton Anthology of English Literature, there's an editor in charge who has brought all those pieces together in one book. Typically with collaborative books, you'll be writing a new piece, not taking something from what you already have written, although that's a possibility as well. For a collaborative book, there's one person typically who serves as the anthology editor and the publisher in the self-publishing world. So typically that person will be the decision maker in terms of who they bring on into the project and they will take responsibility for publishing the book. That doesn't mean they're doing all the work. Often they can hire someone to actually manage that process for them. I've done that for clients. My friend Karen Crompton has done some of that work for clients. She's also an editor and a story coach. When we do that, we take on the responsibility of organizing the project. We may take on the responsibility of selecting the authors who get to participate in the project. It just depends on what the anthology editor wants us to do. The anthology editor starts by picking a subject matter and a theme, and then they invite authors to submit a chapter for the book. They may invite people they know. They may open it up wide to anyone who wants to participate. A lot of people will see that and think, this is great. I can be an author without having to write a whole book. But is it really that simple? Well, yes and no. And is it really great? Maybe. (laughs) Let's look at three pros of collaborative books for the contributors. We're looking at this from the perspective of the person who is committing to contribute to the book. Pro number one is you probably won't have to write more than 10 pages. Typically, a collaborative book will have anywhere from 10 to 20 or even more authors And each author will only be required to submit one chapter, which is usually 10 pages or less. If you want to tell a story or share an idea, but you just don't think it's big enough yet, you don't have enough content yet to do it in a full book, a collaborative book might be a great option for you. If you want to exercise your writing muscles and further develop your writing skills and work your way up to writing your own book, This might be a good opportunity to have a piece placed in a collaborative book. Or maybe if you think you never really actually want to write a whole book, then this might be a way for you to get one of your pieces published in a book. Pro number two is that a collaborative book done well can get you some visibility. If the editor, not the copy editor, remember, but the anthology editor who is selecting the pieces has a solid platform and a solid marketing plan, then participating in that book could get you potentially some visibility and or some people to follow you. It could grow your platform, grow your community, and potentially drive people to your website, to your opt-in, to sales, to things of that nature. And pro number three is that you can, after publishing some of your work in a collaborative book, call yourself a contributing author. If you have no plans to write your own book anytime soon, being a contributing author could add some credibility to your platform, right? It could give you a little more legitimacy as the expert, particularly if the collaborative book is well-received and well-respected. But now let's look at three cons of collaborative books. Con number one, when you participate in a collaborative book, you're not quite an author yet. 
you're a contributing author, but it will be disingenuous to call yourself an author just yet. That would be like saying you wrote a long blog post and so you're an author. You're a blogger. And that's great. There's it's not a matter of value. It's just a matter of choosing the right terms that convey to people what it is that you've done. So don't buy into a collaborative book under the misguided notion that writing 10 pages for it makes you an author. Author does equal authority because writing an entire book is an indication that you've done deeper or more expansive work on a topic. There is nothing wrong, however, with becoming a contributing author. It's just important to be aware of the difference. Con number two is that you have no control over the quality of a collaborative book when you are just a participant. If you decide to participate in one, you really have to trust the editor, the anthology editor, and to some extent, you have to trust that he or she is going to choose contributing authors whose quality of work will be at a level that you would like to be associated with. I've seen anthology editors do a fantastic job, and some of them have hired people like me and the friend I mentioned earlier, Karen, to actually make sure that the work that's submitted is up to par for publication. They only accept quality pieces, they hire an experienced copy editor, and they put real effort into the design and the marketing of the book. So in the end, you get a really beautiful end product that you can be proud of. But I've seen other anthology editors take work from whoever is willing to pay, whether it's good or not. They don't invest in professional copy editing or proofreading. They don't invest in a team of professionals to design their book. In that case, you typically end up with something, frankly, that you would be embarrassed to have your name on. So there is a level of trust that you have to have in the editor that you choose to work with if you choose to do a collaborative book. Con number three is that collaborative books do require a financial investment. Typically, the anthology editor is going to incur expenses in publishing this book and in marketing this book. And so they do charge a certain fee for you to participate. Some of those fees are really quite reasonable and maybe worth the price for you. But I've seen others that charge much more than it would cost you to self-publish your own book. And they offer little in return. That means you have to be really clear about how the business end of any collaborative book works. How much does it cost to participate? Is the editor investing some of that money in a team of publishing professionals to make sure the book is great? Will there be a standard for the work that's published or can just anyone submit anything they want? If one of the author's work is subpar, will she have help to make it better? Will you be able to get copies at cost to sell on your website or at speaking events or to give away to your clients and your customers? Are you expected to be on the hook to buy a certain number of books? Does the editor have plans for marketing the book? Are you expected to do any marketing? If so, how much? And speaking of marketing, don't be fooled into thinking that a collaborative book will sell well just because the editor, the anthology editor who's putting this whole project together has a solid audience. That is not necessarily enough. And in many cases, it's not enough. I've seen collaborative books edited by influencers that barely sold because there was really no marketing effort behind them. They announced a launch and that was pretty much the end of it. Big name or not, they still need a marketing campaign for that book. And you also need to be clear about whether or not there's any profit sharing. Typically there is not. Typically the profits go to the publisher, which is also the anthology editor. However, if you decide to sell copies of the book yourself, you can typically buy them at cost and then sell them and keep the difference. So what is the bottom line on collaborative books? I've consulted on collaborative book projects that turned out really well. I was really proud to be a part of them. I've also talked to many people over the years who felt cheated by the collaborative book projects that they participated in. So would I take part in a collaborative book project? Probably not, but maybe. Only under very specific circumstances, which as of yet have not presented themselves to me. That's my position because I write for a living. It's one of the things I do. I teach people how to write and I write, but you are not me. You have your own decision-making factors to consider a collaborative book hosted by the right person, edited by the right person, published by the right person, might be a good opportunity for you to move closer to your writing goals, or it might be an absolute no for you. 
The bottom line for me is that you have to do your due diligence as you would with any other investment of your time and money, and you're best served by having really reasonable expectations of what being a contributing author can do for you and for your business and for your platform and for your story. If you're thinking about participating in a collaborative book, go in with your eyes open. Ask lots of questions, like some of the questions I've asked in this episode. Read the fine print. Make sure the money makes sense and keep your author goals in mind as you make that decision. That's all for this episode, my friends. If you've enjoyed it, follow me on Instagram at Candace L. Davis for more writing tips and inspiration. Thanks for listening to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis, and I'll see you next time.